discussion where we left last week. So last week we were talking about how to use PHP with MySQL. And we showed you how to, how to connect to the database and uh, show data from your database on your web page. So, they, so today we'll make some further modifications and uh, some advanced uh, SQL queries will be, will be run through PHP. So first we are making sure that uh, locally we are running the MySQL server and MySQL server and Apache PHP server. Okay, then uh, for this week, we'll be creating a new project so from Eclipse, so our workspace is C Zamp HT Docs. We're launching Eclipse. Okay, so next, okay, let's close this. We'll be creating a new PHP project. We call it, let's call it week 10. And next. Okay, and then uh, let's copy the example codes that are going, we are going to use this week. So I, as you know, every week uh, in the lecture materials or in the study materials, I post the example codes as well. So, so that you can actually make use of them and run the examples yourself. So in HD docs, you see uh, we have created this project week 10, right? So XAMPP HD docs, we just created this project through Eclipse pasting the example codes from week 10. Okay, and okay, then um, let's go and try to see if this code is visible. So localhost, week 10. Uh, so we can see uh, the source codes that we just pasted on the on the browser on the folder, and then um, let's start with the script. This one. Okay. So once we are trying to uh, load this PHP, like this this uh, PHP document, we are seeing some errors. Uh, okay, so let's go and fix those errors. So if we go to week 10, okay, let's do refresh because we posted our example source code in the project. Okay, now we can see it here. We are trying to change this. We are trying to view this PHP page. So first of all, you see that it requires a MySQL I connect.php. Uh, so this is for connecting to the local database. Okay, uh, let's connect to the local database as well. Local host PHP my admin. So local database. So this is our local database server and through the interface. Okay, so this is the interface where I, we can see the local database server. So first we need to connect to the database server, to the database itself. And then, uh, then there are other things. Okay, so, so the connection actually failed. And the other thing is includes.html. Uh, then this is not found, connection failed. And also, yeah. Okay, so let's go and uh, 
solve those things. Okay, so from previous week, if you remember from previous week, we had already created a connection script. So if you want to know the details, how that connection script was created, you have to check last week's video. So it was in week nine. So we had used this connection script and then we had this header and footer. Let's go and post them. They are actually, we can use them in week 10 also. Okay, so this connection script, this one had the username. So we defined for, we in this connection script, we had defined four constants. The constant names were db user, db password, uh, db host, and db name. For each of those constants, we had put a, assigned a value. Uh, this value is uh, just the value that for the username and password that we had set. Again, we actually explained every every other thing in, in the past week. In the last week, we uh, explained how actually we have done it. So after defining four constants, we create uh, we ran this mysqli underscore connect function which is a built-in function that built-in function takes four parameters the first parameter is the uh, username second parameter is sorry the first parameter is the uh, address of the local mysql server the second parameter is the username the third parameter is the password and the fourth parameter is the database name that is running in that server so we already have defined uh, values for each of these constants we are putting the constants there and to create a connection object okay so we will use this connection object this week as well and then um, here in the includes we had header and footer html so those are also being used in our script. So let's see here. So if you check here, okay, let's refresh again. Now you see uh, the MySQL underscore connect that is script and also the includes folder. So this one, uh, the the script that we are checking now is inside the script underscore 10 underscore zero one. And so this one requires the connection script to connect to the database, but the connection script is not in the same folder. It's in the root folder. So, so it's in the root folder. So you have to go one step back and then get the connection script. This is right. This is correct to get this one include. So for the connection script, we use require because this is required, but in uh, once you require something and if, if that file is not accessible, then you get an error. But if you put, instead of require, if you put include, it won't show you any error, it will show you a warn, warning. So for this one, we first include a header.html, then we have use a connection script. And finally, we, use a footer.html. Now this header and footer is inside the includes folder, but it's not in the same folder. So first you have to go to the root folder and then go to includes. So let's do that. So now we have fixed the path and you can see some results here. That's the first thing. Let's, before we do proceed, let's fix the same thing in other files. So here also we go to, so this is inside the script 1004 folder. So we have to go to, the, if we want to go to the header in the includes, first I have to go to the root folder, then includes, then header, then HTML. Yeah, MySQL connect is correct here. It's inside the root folder. And finally, 
this one okay and then for this one delete user this one yeah this one is in the same it's in the same level as include so this is this is fine uh, and again it's in the same level as mysql connect so i don't need to go to the root and also includes footer is right edit user includes is in the same level as edit user the connection is also in the same level footer is in the same root folder and finally another view user yeah the connection string is in the same folder so i don't need to go to the root includes also is in the same folder and these includes also in this is in the same folder okay so for now i have fixed fix the paths okay now let's go to the our main discussion okay so now we are navigating this file vusers.php inside script 1001 okay so let's go so last week already we had seen uh, some uh, a similar kind of uh, a similar kind of page but the difference now you see is last week we had seen just this table we didn't see these edit and delete right so these two things are additional things so let's go and see what's happening here okay so here first i am creating a connection and then okay then uh, Okay, so first I'm creating connection and then I, I'm building a query, selecting last name, first name, uh, date, registration date, okay? And then I am using the connection object to run the query, okay? After running the query, uh, this function returns the number of rows. It returns the number of rows that I get from the database. So after running the query, uh, whatever is in the database is actually stored in dollar $R in this variable. Then I'm counting the number of variables. If the number of variables are greater than zero, sorry, if the number of rows or that means number of records are greater than zero, in that case, I am creating this table. Okay, so I'm creating this table. This table has five columns. First, I am creating the header columns here in one row. Uh, the header column has like five columns, uh, edit, delete, last name, first name, and date, okay? So that is the header column. I'm just building the header column. That is this column, right? So I'm building this column. Uh, okay, before building that column, I had a paragraph which says there are currently uh, this number of users. So the number of users means how many rows I had read from the database. So we had like 27 rows. So you can see here, there are currently 27 registered users. Okay, so then I am creating the header with five columns. Yeah, this is the header column, right? And then I keep on filling uh, the actual table. So let's go and see how we are doing it. Okay, so after building the header, we are running a while loop, right? So in the while loop, what we're doing is uh, using this mysqli underscore fetch dot array. Uh, inside that, I'm using uh, this query variable okay and also this second parameter it makes sure that i get all the records in an associative array already you know what associative array is right so once you 
once I actually run this query, what will happen is it will, uh, so already you know all the records are, all the records are stored in this like dollar $R variable. So what this function does is it takes each of the, so this dollar $R has 27 rows in it, right? So it takes one row one at a time and divide the row in associated arrays. So suppose the first row, this is the first row, right? This is the first row. So what it will do is this function will take this row and divide it into three associated arrays. First array's name would be, do since we are putting it in, putting that thing in the, dollar row variable okay so it will divide them into three associative arrays one is row user id uh, row last name sorry not user id so row last name row first first name and row uh date right okay okay so if, let's go to the actual database and see what we are getting everything from. So basically we're reading from the site name database. And in, in, from the users column, right? Okay, so from user column, you see uh, it has user ID, first name, last name, email, password and registration date. Okay, so that means all these things, all this one, two, three, four, five, six, all these five, six things are now inside, inside this row, row variable, right? So first of all, this one now contains the whole table. This table has 27 rows and each row has six columns, okay? By running the while loop, I'm taking one row at a time. So I am getting one row at a time. And since I am calling this function, MySQL I fetch array with this parameter, what it does is it takes the row and divides it into six associative in an array of six six values. Okay, so in here I'm not displaying everything. I am just displaying, you see, I'm displaying what I'm displaying just the last name, uh, first name, and the date. Okay, but there are other things like there are user ID, there is password. I'm not displaying them, but I am using the user ID and for another another purpose. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a a creating a link. You see, in the first cell. So I have five cells, right, for five columns. On the first cell, I'm creating a link. On the second cell, I'm creating a link, okay? Third cell, I'm displaying last name. Fourth cell, I'm displaying first name. Fifth cell, I'm displaying the registration date, okay? Now, the first two, the first two cells are two links I'm creating. So, the text that I'm showing is edit and delete. And as you know, once you create a link object, you have to put a reference. The reference is edit user PHP, then uh, question mark, then ID equals to it gets the ID from this, from user ID. So, but I will, I will actually show you how actually this works. So, just for now, what you see is for each row, for each row, right? We are creating one table row here. We're displaying five things here. First one is edit, second one is delete. So edit, this is a hyperlink, delete, second cell is also hyperlink, third cell, is the last name, fourth cell is the first name, and fifth cell is the registration date, okay? Okay, 
So for, for now, just focus on this. Let's go and check our next script. So this is our next script. Let's run this. So this is in 10.04 folder, 10.04 folder. This is also view users PHP. Okay, so let's see what this script does. Okay, now you can see some changes here, right? So before you are seeing all the records in one page, now you're seeing a few records here, and then uh, you are seeing some hyperlinks in the bottom. So basically, the records are now being shown in multiple pages instead of one. So this is page one. If I click on two, this is page two, and then Okay, so if I click one, there is no previous thing. If I click two, now there is a new link, previous, then three. If I click three, the next is gone, okay? Because there are like 27 records and each page actually shows maximum of 10 records. So just look at the dynamics here. Uh, the difference between the last script and this script is this script divides the data into multiple pages and creates link to the, those pages when i am on the first page there is no link called previous if i go to the second page now i have this because now we, we create a new link with previous and then i have a link with next but if I click on three the next is gone because there is nothing after three right but still there is previous and one two and at the same time you see that the page you are in is disabled so you cannot click it other things are enabled. So how actually we are doing this? To check this, let's go to our script. Okay, so this is script. Uh, first we press the connection and then there is a variable called display. So by this variable, we determine like how many records we want to show in one page. So this is, assigned to 10 okay uh okay and now just notice one thing if i am on page one okay so if i'm here on view users this is just look at the address if i change it to page two now you see something is added here right s equals to 10 and p equals to three and then if i click on this s equals to 10 and p equals to three okay so you see there is something getting changed here so if i go to my code okay so display this variable determines how many records i'm seeing and then as you know if you post something or if you get something. So difference between get and post is by get, you send data in the URI to the PHP server. And by post, you actually send the data in the in the body. So this is the change in the address means, so first you check like how many pages are there. So if already this P variable is assigned, Say if get p is already set and the value of get p is is uh, numeric you know that how many pages you need to create okay so two things one is how many records you want to display in one page and then how many pages in total you need so you may depending on what is script what phase of the script you are running you may know it or you may not know it so first uh so first time when you are actually coming here so you won't get anything from here so you'll go to else you will run the query this query counts the number of users which is 27 right and then it shows like uh, if that number so you run the query and then you 
take the whole table here. Okay. Not the whole table. So this one is, just look at this, MySQL number. So this one actually will take the number of rows. So because of this parameter. So number of parameter uh, rows will be 27. So records will have 27. If this number of records is greater than the number of records you want to display in one page. So this is 10, right? So I have 27 records, but in, in every page I can show at most 10. In that case, you have you can now determine that how many pages you need to show all your records. So 27 by 10 is 2.7, you take the ceiling. So that means number of pages is three. That means now we are determining that we need three pages. Otherwise, if the number of records is less than the display, then number of pages would be what? Would be one, right? So you determine the number of pages you need. That's the first part, okay. So, if the p variable is already defined, that means you already know the number of pages. But if the p variable is not defined, so you see here, first time when I come here, you don't know how many pages you need, right? So then you number take the number of uh, records and then determine that you need three pages. But if I go here, when I'm running this second page, already I know that the number of pages are three, right? So this time, you don't need to determine anymore. So you just get the value from here, okay? Next is the S, which is the starting point. So what would be the starting record? If you are on page one, the starting record would be zero, right? But if you are on, or it will be one. If you are on page two, now you won't show the record zero, right? You will show, start showing from record 11, right? So what it says is, if this variable is already there, yes, then you get the value, starting value from there. Otherwise, the starting value would be zero, okay? Yes. Okay, so, so let's go here to see. So when I when I'm first time loading this, there is no p and s value, right? So there is no p value, there is no s value. So I don't know how many pages are there. I don't know uh, where to start. Uh, so from the code you already saw that it goes it goes here. I don't know how many pages and how many, where where to start. It goes here. It determines the number of pages, so it hits here, right? Because I I don't know how many uh, from the URI I don't get the value of p, or from the URI I don't get the value of s. So it determines that there are three pages, and it also comes here and the start is zero. Okay, so it builds three pages, and the start this is from zero. Next time when I click on two. Now, there are two things in the URI. First, start is from 10 and number of pages is three. So this time, the code goes here, it checks, it already gets the value of P, which is three. So number of pages is three. This time it doesn't go into else, right? And then from here, it also gets the value of S from the URI and the number of the starting point is now 10 instead of zero. So what it means is now you're showing the record number 10 up to record number 19. If you go to here, three. Now again, the number of pages you know is three, that's fine. And S equals to 20. So this is record number 20, and then you end at the last record, okay? So either you get the start S, and P from the URI, or you don't get it. If you don't get it, you calculate it. If you get it, then use it directly. So this is what this script is doing. Okay. And then see this thing. So every time you are loading page, 
you are building a query select last name first name uh, registration date and now instead of reading the whole table what you are doing is you are uh, limiting so i think i showed you how to use limit so you are limiting uh, limiting saying that i need from the table i don't need the whole table i just want to start from this index and take this many records so if you're on page two already your start is 10 and number of displays 10 so you start at this uh, element 10 so instead of taking the whole table now it will this query will take suppose from yeah from here to here okay so this will only take start from element number 10 and take 10 elements okay and show them and show them in your page okay show them on your page okay Okay, so okay, so let's go and to the next part of the script. Okay, so you create that query. That query only takes. Uh, then you run the query. So that query only takes a part of the database. So starting index. You are mentioning the starting index, and how many rows you want to read. Okay, yep. So now this one has 10 records. Suppose if you're in page two, and then you are running a while loop similarly. I already explained this, this in your previous script. So, first you are uh, creating headers with edit, delete, last name, first name, date, date registered, and then you are filling up the cells running a while loop so this while loop will be will be like running 10 times because you fetched 10 records and for each row you are actually creating one row with last name first name the, so the first two cells are two uh, hyperlinks and the last three cells are last name first name and date registered okay okay now let's see how we are actually making this part this final part so if the number of pages is greater than one so how do you know the number of pages either you get it from the uri or you get it like you calculate it right so depending on which is which page you are in depending on which page you are in you actually will know your script will know like which page you are in so if total number of pages is greater than one what you do is you start creating a paragraph and you determine like uh, what page you are in so your current page so you know that the current number of pages suppose you already either you calculated or you got it from the uri you know that the number of pages is three which is greater than one so what you do is you are determining your current page so suppose you are on page 10 or you are on page three so suppose you are here now your starting is 20 so you want to your script wants to know which page you are in your start is 20 right and then by display 20 uh, divided by displays 10 2 plus 1 3 so my current page is 3 okay okay so if my current page is not if my current page is not if i'm not on the first page what i'm doing is i'm creating a link with previous okay so i am creating a link which will take me to page 2 because i know that i'm uh, currently on page 3 
okay but if you're on page number one you don't need to create this hyperlink right so when once i'm on actually page one I'm on page one, right? I don't need to use uh, create previous. But once I am on page two, now my script determines that I am on page two. So it's creating a link called previous with link to page one, right? Okay. Similarly, then I keep on adding links to the number of pages that I need, right? Yeah. And one thing here, like if i have like three pages i will add three links but the difference is i won't create any link so you see i won't create any link for my current page so if i'm on page one i will create link for page two and three but i won't create link for page one itself so if i am on uh, if i am on my current page i will just display that page number i won't create a link for that i will create a link for the other two pages so using this for loop, I am actually creating links for all other pages except the current page. And finally, if I'm on the final page, that means if my current page is the last page, they, then I won't create this final link, which is next, right? Next. Otherwise, if my current page is not my, is not equals to the number of whole number of pages that I have. So my current page is two. Still, I will create this next link. If my current page is three, I already know that the total number of pages is also three, so I won't create this next link, okay? So I hope this one explains how I am creating, num uh, I'm creating these links, I'm creating these links dynamically. Okay, so depending on whether I am page one, I'm creating the previous or not, uh, whether I am on page three. So if I click on, if I'm on page three, I'm not, I am not anymore creating the next link. If I am page one, I'm no more creating the previous link. Otherwise, I'm creating, and these three ones, uh, these ones I am creating using a for loop, but I'm making sure that I'm, this link is not clickable on the current page. This is clickable only on the, other pages okay so i know this is a little little bit overwhelming but to understand this clearly what you need to do is this is a must and you need to do this if for them for to do very good in the next exam you need to just go through the video again and just follow the instructions and go through these the script to have a very clear understanding what this script is doing. So the first part of the script is actually creating a record, but instead of showing every record in the table, it's just showing part of the record in the table. The next part of the script is creating links to the other pages. Okay, yep. Okay, now let's do this one view users directly so as you see uh this one has edit delete link right but if i click actually nothing it says not found the reason is uh let's see the reason is here is the reason so yeah so you see that the first link edit link it actually redirects you to the edit user.php page and delete user dot and the delete link takes you to the delete user.php page but inside this folder 1004 we don't have this any edit user or delete user php so that's why it says it's not found okay so now we are going to another another script it still is view user.php on the same level it has now edit user and delete user pages. So edit user and delete user script will be now accessible. Okay, so view users PHP, this is directly inside week 10. Not any 
in any folder. So this is directly in week 10. Okay. Now, once you click on edit and delete, something will happen. Let's see what will happen. Okay, so you see here, once you click on edit, it will actually take you, it will execute this PHP script. User, edit user PHP ID is user ID or delete user dot PHP and it will take the ID because in the records already I have the user ID, right? But I'm not just displaying them. I'm just displaying the last name, first name and uh, rate date of registration, right? If I come here, I'm just displaying first name, last name and date of registration. But still I have the other records, right? Email, user ID. I'm not just displaying them, but I'm using them. I'm using them for what? I'm using them to add to my PHP script. So my PHP script would be edit user. So once I click on edit, edit user PHP would be triggered. And in the URI, it will, the ID also will be there. So ID equals to user ID. Okay, so let's go and check one example in the page, in the current page. Okay, so let's take, uh, okay, so let's start with the first record. Uh, let's say edit. Okay, so once I do this, edit, you see that ID is 11. Okay, if I go back. Okay, so let's do edit here. The ID is three. So let's go to our database to see if this is right. Yeah, John Lennon, you see that? Okay, now you may have a question like why this is, uh, why I'm seeing this in page two, right? Although this ID is uh, in ID three. The reason is actually this is this one, we're not showing, uh, we are not showing this in order. We are actually sorting this. We're kind of sorting this based on the date registered. So because of that, ID 11 is going to the, to the top and ID 3 is coming in the second page because this is somehow sorted. They're okay, sorted based on their registration date. Okay, so, so this one, if I click on this, uh, David Jones. Okay, so you see here, if I click this now in the PHP script, so if I click this, what's happening? If I click on this, edit user.php, that is this file, this script is getting triggered and it's taking the ID for the user there. So the user there was David Jones and his ID should have been seven. You see, right? David Jones, his ID is seven. And that ID is actually is is actually attached to the URI. Okay. Now let's make some changes. Instead of uh, David Jones, make it less. Uh, make it David Warner and submit. The user has been edited. Okay. Let's see if the user has been edited. So this was one one was we edited this David Jones, right? So let's refresh this. Now you see that for ID seven, the last name has changed to Warner. So that means the editing was successful. Uh, next, uh, okay, so let's see how the editing was done. If I go to the edit user.php,
Okay, so once I'm clicking this, once I'm clicking uh, this submit, edit user.php is getting getting triggered. Okay, so as you see, once I had clicked, uh, okay, so let's go to view users again. If I click on this, edit, if I click on this, we get the ID in URI, right? Okay, so let's go to the code. So it first it will check, check this edit user, it checks if I get if I get any ID from the URI. If I get the ID, then I uh, assign the ID to the ID variable, okay? If I don't get any ID, then it will say like, um, because to run this edit user, like once you submit, right? Once you submit. Okay, so this is what you see once you are not submitted. So it will show you name, uh, address, everything. And now if you submit, yeah, so this is what. So after submitting, it this will be true, right? Okay. So this will be true and then it will check all the field values, first name, last name, email, and none of them can be empty because you are trying to edit, right? Okay, if, if something is empty, then it will show you the empty results, error, error results. Otherwise, otherwise it, what it will do is, it will build a query, right? Select first name, last name, email from users where this. Oh, not select, sorry, where is the update? Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so first, let's, let's go back. Actually, I'm, okay. So first, one, once you are on this page, uh if you click submit then what will happen first it will check if all of these fields are filled up if everything is filled up okay so if something is not filled up you will be caught here so if any of these are not filled up so once you click submit your request method will be posed right so now it will check if your first name is empty or last name is empty or something else is empty if that is empty, then it will, or email is empty, then it will actually generate some errors, okay? If nothing is empty, so if errors, that is empty, that means there is no errors, then what will happen? Then what will happen is you will build a query, select user ID from users where email, already you got the email from there, right? So you got the email from here. So you select the user using the ID, right? And then you see that if you can, if you're able to select, so before you want to update, you have to make sure that that record is, is, is still in the table, right? You cannot update something that is not already there in the table. So by using the select and you got the ID, where did you get the ID? You got the ID from here, right? You got the ID from here. From the URI. So you get the ID, you select the user, and then you see that you actually has an entry for that ID. If you had the entry for that ID, then what you do is now you build a string. 
update users set first name last name email where user id is this right and then you build a string update string update query i don't say string you build the update string a query and you then run the update query using the database connection object right and then you see like and then if if that is successful you say that uh the user has been ed edited okay so is it clear how actually you are doing this from from here first uh once you actually okay let's go here once you click on edit so paul or here uh suppose here peter tark if you click on edit it will uh trigger something it will trigger that edit user script with peter tark's id right okay then once i click submit this script now will check if this is not empty this is not empty this is not empty if none of them are empty it will actually do a select that means we will try to read a record from the database where the id is eight if it finds the record then based on these it will create an update query based on these values and then run the update query so okay so if i change this the pro so first once i click submit what will happen first it will try to see if i have a record with id 8 if I have a record with ID8, then it will create an update, history, update query with Peter, Crow, and this email address and update the database. Okay, so that is how the update is working. Now let's go back to delete. So suppose bring us to delete. Okay, so it says, are you sure you want to delete the user? So you see, once I click the delete, it gets the user ID in the URI, right? So that means from here, your uh, from here your uh, script would be able to know like which ID you are trying to delete. Similarly, like edit, now you actually first look, take a look and then create a delete history uh, query and execute it. So you see delete from users where user ID equals to ID, the ID you are getting from the URI and then you're deleting it. So here is one thing uh, you see here uh, before you do the submit right either uh, the form is submitted this is if or the form is not submitted which is else right so before the form is submitted uh, there is something so this is where you see the form is not submitted yet right this is what you are seeing what you are seeing is you're seeing a radio button, two radio buttons, one submit button, and then there is a hidden button. Instead of hidden, let's change it to text. So what it does is it's actually showing the ID. You see, if I remove this hidden and change it to text, you see the ID is actually being put here right so we are keeping it hidden but we are actually uh, in uh, in the form itself there is a field which stores the id but we are not showing it we are making it hidden 
And in, so instead of hidden, if I put text, you could see the ID. Changing it to hidden. Okay, so are you sure I say yes, and then I submit, and user ID 6 should be deleted now. Okay, now you see that user ID 6 is gone. Okay. So this is how you're deleting The users okay the last thing i want to show you is so i'm viewing the users again so now i have less number of records okay so last thing i want to show you is i can actually sort them so if i sort if i click on last name you see it's getting sorted by the last name if i click on first name it's getting sorted by the first name or date registered well, everyone is registered on the same date, so you cannot see it. Okay, so how actually we are doing this? How are we sorting based on last name, first name, and date registered? Okay, so to see that, let's go to check. Okay, so yeah. So if I go to view users, you see here. Yeah, so you see here we are building the table right here. Okay, so we are building the table. The first part of the table is we are building a header. And the, so this is, remember, this is the script view user.php in the main folder, not in the subfolders. So here, this is the view users.php in the main folder. When you are practicing, just remember this. So here, uh, when you are building the table, first we are building the table, we are building the header, and then we are building the table itself, right? So in the header, there are like five column names, edit, delete, and then last name, first name, date registered, that the way you are seeing here edit, delete, last name, first name, date registered. But the difference than the previous scripts, view users script is, now last name, first name, and date registered, these are now changed to hyperlinks, not just text. This is now hyperlink. So each of these now trigger different scripts, right? Different scripts. So you see, if I click on last name, this same page view users would be regenerated but it will be sorted based on what ln if i click on first name it will be sorted based on what fn if i click on date registered it would be view users would be would be rendered again or shown again but it would be the data would be sorted based on what rd so what this ln fn and rd is so let's see here. So this is the sort, right? So that means when we are first loading the page, we'll check if we have anything in the sort. If the if we have ln in the sort, then we put, put this thing. We I am putting one string like order by. I'm I have one string uh, or variable order by. So I am assigning this value to order by last name ascending. Or if I get FN, I say first, first name ascending. If I get RD, registration date ascending. A default is registration date ascending, okay? That is default, okay. So now see, very carefully look at this.
Okay. So that means if I click on last name, what will happen? Alien will be assigned. Okay, alien would be assigned. So it will be like order by would be last name ascending. So how the query will look 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 like? So if I look at the query, select last name, first name, date format uh, as as what dr user ID from users, then order by. Then we take this variable right order by limit start display okay how many i want to display but now i'm adding this extra thing order by okay so now when it's fetching from the database it's not only fetching it's sorting them based on what based on this order by variable okay so order by may have the value of last name ascending or first name ascending or registration date ascending or if i don't have anything the default is registration date ascending okay so that means once i click on first name what happens once i click on first name once i click on first name this script gets executed users.php then question mark sort fn right okay now once you load this script first it will check this script load is loaded it's check it checks whether this sort variable has some value yes now it will have this value like fn so order by would be assigned as first name ascending so when the query is getting built the query will look like this select last name first name date format like this as dr user id from users order by first name ascending and then limit right so now what will happen is this page so basically once i'm clicking this these once i'm clicking this you see this page is now reloaded and the query is now changing with order by first name ascending. If I click on this, this view users.php, this is reloaded and the query now changes to last name ascending. Okay. So that way, now I am seeing a different order of the records. Okay. So that is all for today i know today's lecture was a bit a bit heavy but it depends on whether you are practicing the exam practicing these things or not so this is very important look at the video and do exactly whatever these steps i i followed so i will share all the example queries with you example scripts with you please create a project of yourself paste all the examples in your project and then make the changes whatever changes are made here the paths and other things and after that do this thing just please i i hope already you have the database you already have created the connection and other things you are up to date if you are not up to date please make sure that you go back in for the previous lectures create the database do everything that i have done in the week nine and do everything that i have showed today and go through this code go through this code so i today i showed actually different things first i showed you how all the users were shown then i showed you uh, how the users are actually broken in multiple pages right and third i showed you how to edit and delete users and how to sort users so total in total i have shown at least five actions so go to each of the scripts here 
just the way I showed you in the video, in the lecture, look at, uh, watch the video, do the same things and go through the script the way I explained to you to see what actually is being done in each of the scripts. 